working with the small cell forum for uh, about a year now and um, they've come up with a number of use cases. Um, the one which we think will really be the most prevalent is the capacity use case. So this is where operators are uh, struggling for capacity with their existing spectrum allocations. Of course spectrum is really expensive. And uh, an easy way to add extra capacity to a network is to use small cells to densify the network beyond what's possible with macro type deployments. With small cell backhaul, you've got many more sites. So uh, backhaul to each small cell site has to be more cost effective than is typically the case of a macro. That's the first thing. Uh, secondly, aggregation. So in a macro network, uh, each node is aggregated together traffic from lots and lots of UVs. So you end up with a relatively smooth traffic stream. But with the small cell, because you've moved the ENUB to closer to the user's handset, the traffic pattern is more like individual users' uh, handsets traffic patterns. In other words, it's bursty. And the problem with bursty traffic is it's hard to carry that efficiently, especially if you're using traditional point-to-point -point type of technologies. Um, point to multipoint can help in both of these uh, problems because um, not only does it add in that back in the aggregation, which uh, we've lost by uh, going to a small cell RAN layer, uh, but also the uh, lower capex that you have with a point to multipoint backhaul rollout helps with the uh, cost uh, driving. So some of the real benefits of using multipoint backhaul for uh, small cells are uh, because you're using a multipoint system, you don't have to have two radios for each link. In the small cell network, you want to deploy more small cells um, because you want to get them closer to users. You need to make sure that the overall costs for a small cell site are much lower than the macro case, and we've heard operators refer to figures of about 10%. Uh, that means you need to think about everything in a quite radically different way. And one way that multipoint microwave can really help is on the backhaul. So by using a multipoint system, you're sharing both the capex that you spend on the uh, backhaul equipment, but also uh, capex you can spend on the spectrum, uh, and opex on continuing to rent that spectrum in years to come. So it's a really powerful benefit for small cell networks. Because of the desire to deploy more small cells to densify the network and increase its capacity, uh, the cost of those small cell sites has to be much lower, so 10% is the figure we would give by operators. And that leads to a desire to install on non-traditional locations, so things like uh, lamp posts, other street furniture and so forth. It's necessary to have something which is aesthetically pleasing if you're going to do that, because it's going to be visible to the public. And uh, things like big dishes are not acceptable and, and wouldn't be permitted by municipal authorities. So what we've done with Vector Style Metro is we've integrated the antenna behind a, uh, a simple radio leading to an uncluttered appearance that's very acceptable to municipal authorities and operators alike. The Vector Style Metro product we see here is commercially available today. Uh, we've been trying this with operators and doing interoperability trials with vendors for uh, a number of months now. And we're now uh, into uh, volume size deployments of this around the world in, in numerous locations. We have two generations of Vector Style Metro because we're very keen to engage with operators early and start learning about small cell networks. These are new things for both operators and vendors and uh, we really want to incorporate the feedback from early deployments into our next generation of product. In particular, we've already learned that aesthetic appearance is very important, so we've continued the evolution of that for the next generation of product. Um, we're also looking at very significant uh, throughput increases. So the next generation of product will have a capacity of 750 megabits per second versus the current generation of 300 megabits per second. So a, a very significant improvement there, suitable for the most dense networks. The next generation product will be commercially available in 2014 and we'll be trialing with operators very accurately by the end of 2013.